an unusual day. You know, I've been wanting to come out and enjoy the sunshine so it goes rainy. I get a chance to enjoy it for a few minutes and then it disappears. Then as I start to get kind of used to the windy, wet weather, it warms up and just stays cloudy. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but you know, my plants, they just keep growing anyways. And I kind of like that. You know, it's almost as though, as much as we would like to organize everything into a set pattern and make everything fit just perfectly so that all of our days would be just exactly sunny and bright, God always has something else in store. <laughs> I don't get, you know, the normal days of just everything's the same every day. As a matter of fact, most of my days, every day is different. I rarely have a day that I can honestly say is mundane and repetitious. It doesn't seem to always be the same. And I think I like that about God. You know, He always seems to bring to me a new awareness of what He's doing either in my life or in the life of another person or in creation. As I look around and I think about, you know, how He's made the day for me, you know, to enjoy and to be a part of. I kind of like thinking of that. You know, because then I, when I start thinking about God and not myself, I start sensing Him. When I start considering what He's doing, you know, and what's happening with people's lives and how He touches them, I kind of get a little excited. You know, it's kind of like, ooh, that's neat. But I have to admit that. I was just all set in my ways, you know, and I thought, okay, you know, Lord, I got this website going, you know, and I've got, you know, the videos going, and I've got all my blogs going, and the networks going, and then, you know, this thing and that thing and whatever going, and then suddenly he threw in a, what do they call it, a screwdriver in the gears, you know, and kind of like, <laughs> he threw in HTML5. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, you don't need to know. It's just something that one of the websites now offers. Wow, Lord, what do you want me to do with HTML5? So I started the Biblical Christian Network page or website. Another website. <laughs> oh, boy. It's just too much fun. But, you know, I, I think about that, and I know that over the years it's taken me a long time to get here, you know, to be able to be enjoying you know the ministry the way God has allowed me to do it and some of it's been challenging you know over the years to see his hand and how he moved me in certain ways until finally at the end of my life all the pieces seem to come together and they fit boy I tell you there were times in my life where I thought I understood what was going on and once I got down the road I kind of went wow this is different <laughs> But God always has a purpose and a plan in how he wants to do things as opposed to how we want to do things. I know Joseph, when he was, you know, like with his brethren, you know, he thought, well, everything's going to be fine. You know, I'll just tell my brothers about this dream I had, you know, and they're going to accept it, you know, and everything will be glorious. Well, as soon as he told his brothers about the dream he had, <laughs> they got rid of him. <laughs> they sold him off into slavery. Well, if this isn't your will, God. Obviously, yes, it was because going through those trials and going through those tribulations and going through that experience gave David something he never would have been able to do had he not gone through those things. Sometimes life is like that. You have to go through giving up things or having things taken away from you before God can give you things that are better for you. I know for myself, you know, I've gone through some pretty rough experiences, you know, I I have mentioned before, you know, I've been divorced, you know, and man, you know, I, I was like everybody else say, you know, once you get married, oh, you're married for life, you know, and boy, I always thought that was the way it was, you know, until you discover once you go through a divorce, wow, that's not an experience that's very pleasant, it's not very beneficial, but then once I had been through divorce, and I began to minister to people, I realized, wow, Lord, now I understand. 
I can use that experience, though you didn't really want me to have to go through it. You've allowed me that privilege of going through it or to deal with it so that I could minister to those that have gone through divorce. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. So you already knew how I was going to screw up, and you used that screw up anyways. And literally, he did. And, you know, to be fair, you know, people say, well, you know, if you're divorced, you can't be a minister. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. There are lots of ways that you could definitely be a minister of God. You know, God uses lots of different people for any reason he wants to. And so, you know, I used to beat myself up over the years over that, you know, that because I thought, oh, no, I could never teach or I'd always have to be, you know, like, oh, the toilet bowl cleaner. So I was Mr. Tidy Man. You know, I'd go clean up things behind the scenes. You know, and God kept saying, teach, teach, teach. And I kept going, no, no, no. Uh-uh, <laughs> not me, man. I've been through a divorce. You know, and uh, even though it was one of those divorces, quote, unquote, they call justified, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. As if any kind of, you know, separation between a man and a woman, you know, is, is justified. You know, it's just sin is sin. And when you deal with sin, you have to recognize that there are consequences to sin and once you deal with those consequences and all things are solved then God uses you you know and ministers to you you still move on you don't stop what you're doing you do what God tells you to do and a lot of times people just don't get that and then there are other people that use you know divorce as a leverage or as a you know tool well me personally I thought divorce sucked <laughs> and I've been through more than one now man what a bummer you know shows you what happens when you go through it because the consequences of sin will follow you until finally God can deliver you from yourself until you finally give up control your life <laughs> oh okay I don't want to make those decisions anymore God you make the decisions now gratefully I am so glad that you know I have learned my my uh, Ishmael's you know and my Isaac's that what God has joined together let no man tear asunder but hey you know God you're the one putting it together because when I put things together it don't work so well but that's not an excuse for people to go out and get divorced because they'll say now you know they oh well I heard Michael say on video that you know God put together and I don't think God put our marriage together yes he did if you're married God put it together and if you get divorced you will have to stand before God and answer for however many times you've been married bluntly you will stand before a holy God and answer for the wife of your youth as David said you know, the wife of your youth, be satisfied with the wife of your youth. In other words, the first one, if you're married more than once. So you will be asked about that, you know, person, and you will deal with that consequence before God. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be condemned. God forbid, you know, God's not like that. God's going to ask you, you know, what you need to know about your heart when it comes to as you were dealing with that person and you'll be revealed for what you were to that person because a lot of us really don't know that much about marriage and about relationships and about how God is the third party of that marriage you know and how he's really involved personally in every marriage yeah that's pretty serious stuff so God wants to kind of know hey what happened you know he doesn't do it like that because he already knows but he wants you to be able to give an answer. So you, if you're a Christian, you be honest, you know, and you be truthful now, and then you're honest and truthful then. If you're not, sorry, and you know, he may beat you up something. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You'll learn as you go through the experiences of life about how divorce isn't just in the physical realm of marriage, but divorce happens lots of times to people who leave churches they divorce themselves from the body of believers that they once were joined together at the hip so to speak they divorce themselves from their jobs that they said they would stay at and then suddenly they decide oh I got a better deal you know there are lots of ways that divorce affects us in our lives but God says consider the lilies how they grow I do a lot I consider how my tomato plants are growing <laughs> I need oil said an ancient monk, so he planted an olive sampling. Lord, he prayed, it needs rain, and its tender roots may drink and swell. Send gentle rains. And the Lord sent gentle showers. Lord, prayed the monk, my tree needs sun. Send sun, I pray thee. And the sun shone, 
gliding, gilding the, wow, gilding, boy, is that an old word, and the sun shone, gilding the dripping clouds. Now frost, my lord, to brace its tissues, cried the monk, and behold, the little tree stood sparkling with frost, but at evening it died. Then the monk sought the cell of a brother monk and told his strange experience to the other monk. He says, I too planted a little tree, he said, and I, and see, it thrives well, but I entrusted my tree to its God. He who made it knows better what it needs than a man like me. I laid no condition. I fixed not waves or means. Lord, send what it needs, I prayed. Storm or sunshine, wind, rain or frost, you made it and you know what it needs and you know it well. So oftentimes in life, you know, that seems to be what people want to do is to tell each other what to do and how to do it. But I found that more often than not, you give people the tools and the opportunity to use what God has given them, and then they can find what God wants for them. Because I can't be, you know, where someone is, and I have no idea where their heart is at or what God is doing with them. They may have an answer that's just waiting around the corner for them to just open their ears, and they just needed somebody to listen. So oftentimes what I do is that as I listen to someone, I'll, I'll ask them questions, see where they're coming from and what they want to do, and then, you know, I try to recommend to them to, you know, seek the Lord, and, you know, they usually tell me they do, and, you know, God usually comes through, and sometimes they're not understanding of it, so I participate a little more. But, you know, there really is nothing quite like being in person with someone where you can see them face to face, you know, talk to them, and relate to them on a personal level. I know for me, when I was a young man, you know, I had this one elder deacon, I guess he was, kind of an elder or a deacon, I'm not sure which he was, but anyways, he used to pick me up for prayer meetings that we used to have before church, or actually, it wasn't even before church, it was every morning, Monday through Friday, we'd pray for the community. So he picked me up, and we'd go down to the church and we'd pray, you know, and man, I got to know that guy pretty good by just being with him, you know, by hanging around with him, by hanging out, and, uh, yeah, he'd come, sometimes, you know, he'd come drag me out of bed, you know, and one time even a miracle happened when he called me and I was in the hospital. But um, it was kind of neat, you know, this guy, and uh, I remember just being blessed by the fact that he was consistently there, always, kind of like a Barnabas, you know, helping me out, you know, just always there to take me to the prayer meeting. That's all he was there for, you know, I mean, I never really had any other connection with him in too many ways you know once in a while we went down to like gospel mission and he liked to work on you know things there to volunteer help and so I went and helped him at times and I remember giving a message one time at the mission you know because of that you know and it was kind of fun you know I enjoyed it and uh, I know a lot of times we forsake the assembling together the brethren for the benefit of having our own little kind of shtick you know where we want to have our own little you know ministry here and our own little church here and our own little thing here but there's nothing quite so beneficial as having someone you can talk to you know where you can call them up at night and pray you know or maybe even go to a prayer meeting with i think that's why god gave us a church you know well I mean, it's true you have to kind of search around and find which one you like and which one fits but once you start to you know it's not like you gotta go there and you know throw out all your dirty laundry you know or clean laundry it's kind of like you know God wants you to go there so that you can help other people because the best way I know how to get through my problems is by going to church and helping someone with their problems so you see a lot of times I'll tell people hey go to church but they think I'm telling them to go to church and get cleaned up it's like not really I'm telling you to go to church because God will use you to minister to someone else and that's really the reason why God wants you to go to church it's because your experience of what you're going through is going to help you to be tender so that you could touch someone else's life. So don't be surprised if you don't understand what you're going through or you have no idea until God does reveal it to you why you're going through what you're going through. It just might be that the Lord is making you a vessel perfect right where you're at for someone else who has a need, but you are just a little bit too, too perfect let's say, for that person. So you need to be a little less righteous so that they can talk to you and relate to you as one-to-one, -one, saying, 
hey, he knows where I'm at. He hears me. He understands, you know. Because the first thing that you'll ever hear a person say is that, oh, you don't understand. <laughs> it's like, well, you could say that, but me, I pretty much tried to really figure out what grace extended itself to, so me and Solomon, we had a lot in common. And I think I pretty much got into everything I could possibly get into without really being condemned completely. <laughs> so, I don't know about you, but I know that whatever my circumstances in life are, you know, I usually have that opportunity in my life to minister to someone else who's going through the same thing I've already been through. Maybe you're that way today. Maybe you're going through something that God wants you to go through so that you can help someone else along their way. But you never thought of it that way, did you? God did.